human body systems computer science component where we are going to be creating a quiz for your project. Uh, one thing that you need to know for this quiz, one thing that is needed prior to coding is that you do need a minimum of five questions that have a one to two word answer. The reason why I say a one to two word answer is because Scratch is very particular when a user inputs data that it's got to match up perfectly and we don't want to spend so much time trying to get all the possible answers. So if you say something like, what part of the human body does this and it's a one word answer, that's great. Uh, but if you say something like, how can you determine if a person is sick and it's many words, that's just not going to work for the, the purpose of our quiz. So. Once we have our five questions, let's actually get into coding. So what do we need to do first? Well, ideally, you're going to have a sprite who is going to kind of interact with the person uh, using the quiz to give them the quiz. So I'm going to just pick a sprite from the library. It doesn't matter who it is. I've decided that it's going to be this uh, girl, Alex. And <clears throat> you can choose whichever sprite that you'd like, but there are some things that having a sprite allows me to do. It allows me to house all my code for a particular sprite, okay? So what I wanna do first is click on the events drawer, drag over when flag clicked, and then also drag over hide. So when the flag is clicked, I want to hide. Um, now what I want to do is actually create the quiz component of it. So again, going back to events, now what I want to do is when I receive, so there's a broadcast happening, and if you remember, a broadcast sends a message to every other sprite on the screen. The broadcasting source is going to be the button from your main menu, and so when the button from your main menu is clicked, then Alex will know what to do. So we're going to change this message to quiz. Okay, so when I receive quiz, well, here's the part that is going to um, be different than what you've seen before. When creating a quiz, we want to work with certain types of data. So the thing that I'm going to do is click on data, and I'm going to make variables, and I'm going to make a list. Well, one thing for sure that I want is I want a variable that holds a score. And you can see now that this score thing, uh, this score uh, indicator display has shown up. And I've got a bunch of things now I can do with a variable. I can set it, I can change it, I can show it, I can hide it. In fact, if I click this, I won't see that score up there. So when I receive this quiz, now this is a new quiz, so what do we want? Well, we want that score to be set to zero. We want it reset every time someone is playing the game. I want to make sure that I'm showing the variable score Okay, so I'm showing the variable score, and it's showing it so that the player can see what their score is. Now what I'm going to do is actually make my list of questions. So now what I need to do is click on make a list. Um, the first list, we will call all of these the questions. Okay, so I'm going to click make a list and then questions. Now all of a sudden this box appears and right now length zero, and then all of a sudden this whole section opened up. Well, in order for me to make questions, all I have to do is click this plus. What we're actually creating is an array, and an array is just a sorted list of items that can be referenced in order or out of order, but we're creating an array of questions. And so, um, I'm just going to make some sample questions. Where is the kidney located? Okay, and once I hit enter, it shows up as a permanent question. Then I'll just keep adding questions. Uh, where is blah? Okay, um, what is blah blah? Okay, um, how does this fun? How does the blah function? And what should you do with blah? 
Okay, so now I've got my array of five questions. I'm going to click this X to get rid of that last uh, fifth, uh, sixth question. So now I've got five. The computer recognizes, the computer doesn't really care what I've written in here. It's just referencing it by this um, number. So at location one, that's what's stored. At location two, that's what's stored. And that's essentially what an array does. It stores information at a certain location. Now what I want to do is make another list of all of my answers. So now that I've got my answers, I can put my answers for each question. And what's going to be important is that for each, uh, each row or each number or each memory area, it's got to match up with the answer. So one has to give you the answer for question number one. Number two has to give you the answer for question number two. So I'm just going to say... Uh, yes, no, maybe, up, down. So my answers are yes, no, maybe, up, down. Now I've got my questions and answers, and now I can begin to um, uh, loop through this. What I'm going to want to create right now is I'm actually going to want to make a variable because I can't reference these places other than this number. Like I can't say ask where is blah. I've got to say ask question two uh, or ask question four. And the only way that I can do that is by making a variable to refer to that place. So I'm going to make a variable. Uh, I'm just going to call it Q number for question number and make sure it says for all sprites. And then I'm going to make another variable. What do you think that's going to be? It's going to be a number for all of my answers. Okay, so I've got my question number and my answer number, and those are going to reference the parts in the array, and I'll show you how we actually do that. So we set the score to zero, we showed the variable score. We're actually going to set a to one. So we're going to set a number to one. Why? I want to reference this part. Oh, sorry, let's actually do Q number so it makes sense. Set question number to one, location one. I, ha I still haven't linked these two things, and I'll link it in, a, in just a minute. So I'm going to set Q number to one. And now the other thing that I'm going to do is set A number to one. Because I want to eventually reference this right here. Okay. Now I can have Alex showing up. So when the flag is clicked, she disappears. But when I receive quiz, I want her to show up and ask these questions. I'll go to the looks drawer. I'll click show. And then I'll say some kind of introduction. I'll just say, welcome to the respiratory system quiz. And we'll do that for three seconds. And then I'll say something like, I hope you're ready to answer some questions. Here we go. Okay. Now we're ready to start answering. So how do we have the computer ask these questions in a row? What we're going to do is go to the control drawer and we need to repeat asking questions. Well, we want to repeat it until the length of these questions is done. So I'm going to go back to my data drawer and then I've got a block here that says length of and I'm going to drag that over and put it in the slot where the repeat was. So length of questions. So this is basically saying repeat this for however, however long this is. This is five uh, slots long. Well then repeat it five times. Now what I want to do is I want to get Alex, the sprite, to ask a question. So I'll go to the sensing drawer and ask some question and wait. Well, here's where my linking of my variable links to the table. What I'll actually do is go back to data. And now I want to ask a certain item of a uh, uh, question. Right? I want to ask a certain item. So I'm going to ask, and you, if you notice, I'm trying to put this here and then it highlights. So I'm going to ask item 
one of questions and weight. Now, I'll leave this as is and we'll go back to the code in a little bit. So item one of questions and weight. Now what I want to do is grab a control block. I want to grab an if else. An if else is a conditional. A conditional basically says there's got to be an, uh, something going on here. If something happens, then do one thing. Else, do something else. So it's basically evaluating whether something is true or false or evaluates to be uh, right or wrong, or it's in a binary state that it's asking a question. So what I want to do right now is I want to go to my operator's drawer and I want to drag over the equals block. If something equals something else, then say something. Okay. So I want to say if my answer is equal to what I stored in the answers here, then it's true. Where do I get that? I'm going, going, going to go back to sensing and right under ask, well, there's a section where it can say answer. So I'll drag over answer and put that in the first slot of my equals. Doesn't really matter, but we'll just say first. Now, what I want to do is if it answer equals item number one of answers, well, I'll go back to data and I'm going to select right here item number one of answers. Then, so if the question is waiting and then they give an answer and it equals item one of answers, then I want to say something. I want to say something like, uh, great job. The studying paid off uh, for two seconds. And now I want to give them a score, right? So if I go back to data, and I want to change the score by one, so I'm just going to drag over this block. So if they give me a right answer, change the score by one. However, if they get it wrong, what I want to say is, sorry, you need to study more. Okay, now, Here's the thing. If I leave this code as it is, it's only going to keep asking item one. That's all the code is saying. I need to find a way to change it to item one, then item two, then item three, then item four. Well, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to kind of uh, use my variables to my advantage. So what I'm going to do is drag over this Q number. So I'm going to ask item Q number of questions. What's it set to right now? It's set to one, right? So it's going to ask question number one, and then I'm going to see if answer equals item number one, actually item A number, which is right now set to one, then it's going to change. Uh, give me the score. Now, once I have my questions and answers set up, now I've got to shift it to the next question and the next answer. And so what I can do is put some code outside of the if loop. Notice I'm not in my if else. The if else has evaluated and once it's done evaluating it's going to jump right here. I'm going to change my question number by one so it goes up to question number two and then I'm also going to change what? I'm going to change my answer number by one. Okay and so now I've got some code that will tell that will loop through this right here. Now, I think at the end it would be fun if the, the sprite tells the person what the score is. So after I'm done going this length of questions, I want to add in my last part of code. I want to tell them what, they, what their score was. So I'm going to grab this say, and I'm going to go to operators, and I will use this join command, and watch what join can do. So I the join can... Uh, combine a statement or a phrase with a variable. So what I'm going to say is your score was, here's my statement or phrase, and now I want to give them their variable, the score for their, their, their actual answer. So what was their score? Well, I'm going to say right here, and I'm going to put that in the second slot of the join. Say your score was whatever it was. Um, great job.
and I'm done. Let's make sure that this works. I will definitely want to save it. So my last name underscore quiz. I want to make sure that I saved it. And I'll go ahead and ask my questions. So when I receive quiz, now wait, this is a little bit annoying. So let's do this real quick. If I go to data and I just uncheck these boxes, because I don't even really, I, I want to, uh, score will show up no matter what. I want to uncheck these so I, I'm not covered right there. There, that seems much better. Now, flag clicked hide, but click on this. Welcome to the respiratory system quiz. Where's the kidney located? I can't remember what I said was, um, oh, I think yes. Great job, the studying paid off. Now it answers, where is blah? No. Great job, the studying paid off. Where, what is blah blah? I don't know. Sorry, you need to study more. How does the blah blah function? Hello? Sorry, you need to study more. And I can't remember what my last answer was. Oh, it was down. What should you do with blah blah? Down. Great job, the studying paid off. Your score was three. Oop, you see how that was combined? What I can do is just make sure that there's a space over here. That's it for making your quiz, and the rest of creating the quiz is just making sure it works with the buttons.